Welcome back to Worship Leader Wednesday by Worship Tutorials. Fuller and I are here to help you become better worship leaders with practical advice in this video right now. And today we're talking about rehearsals. In our last Worship Leader Wednesday, we talked about why you should be having rehearsals if you are not already. And today we're gonna to talk about how to run an effective rehearsal. Maybe your rehearsals now just aren't feeling right, they're not working, or maybe you're not having rehearsals and you want to start. Mm -hmm. um, I have lots of experiences of doing it wrong, Oh, I've and seen I think you some, might as well. I've seen some things go down at rehearsals. <laughs> I've <game>. seen some <laughs> tremendous things go down because of my fault. Yes. And so we're mm -hmm. just going to go ahead and help you because we've already made these mistakes, mm -hmm. and you can not have these mistakes right. and it'll be much better off. The very first thing is you must have a clear, concise mm -hmm. purpose and vision for what your rehearsal is every time you rehearse. Yeah. Okay? We think, oh, we're going to rehearse, we're just going to get the music better. Yeah. D okay, that's a bad way to approach it <laughs> because lots of things can go wrong. Yeah. Every week is different. You have to have a goal in mind. What is our goal for our rehearsal this week? We talked about in the last video why you should have rehearsals. Right. You know, and so you've got to kind of... I would come up with a value system. For me, it's very simple. What do I want the people to experience? Yeah. And what are we going to try to accomplish or learn? Okay, just two very simple things. Maybe it's... the So one is the community side. Yeah. How do I want people to feel this week? Maybe it's a word that God has given me. Maybe it's a topic that our church is talking about. Yeah. Maybe it's something that we're all going through together. Or, you know, like maybe you're in a discipleship series and, and you, mm -hmm. you just, that could be the, the community piece. And then the musical piece is maybe we're doing a new song this week. Yeah. Or maybe we're doing a, a crazy song that might be outside of our normal realm. So that's our focus, right? Mm -hmm. That Those two things, if we accomplish those two things, that'll be fantastic. Because yeah. you don't want it to get boring. Yeah. And as a side note, I hope that you notice from what Fuller says. In these last two videos, we're talking about rehearsal, which is a very nuts and bolts kind of a thing. When people think about rehearsal, they think about, okay, we're going to practice the song so that when we execute them on Sunday, they're perfect. There's, they're, yes, yes, as good as possible. <laughs> right. But if you pay attention, the first things you have said about rehearsals in both of these videos has to do with people. Yeah. And it has to do with relationships with people. Even though you're gathering together to make the songs better, the most important thing that's happening is relationships with each other. Yeah. Yeah. And so I just, I thought I'd point that out because <laughs> it's a remarkable thing because a lot of worship leaders don't view it that way. And you got to get your act together. Yeah. Because if your Sunday is already a disaster, <laughs> nobody wants to come to a rehearsal that's a disaster. Yeah. Two dumpster okay? fires in a week is too, <laughs> and that's, too, too, too many. That's why a lot of people push back. We should have talked about this in the last video. This, that's why people push back on having rehearsals. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, Sunday's already a disaster. Now you want me to it's come like to another three hours of disaster? That level of so twice. stop it. Cut it out. Yeah. Cut it out. Clear, concise purpose and vision for the rehearsal. Yeah. That's your number one goal. So the next point about rehearsals is communication. And you as the worship leader or the leader in charge of the music, whatever your title is, whether you're staff, volunteer, it doesn't matter. You have to communicate to everything to everybody, basically. Over communicate. And then communicate it again and communicate it again. Mm -hmm. People need to know when do they need to be there. Yep. They need to know what is expected of me yeah. when I'm there. They need to have the songs in the right key, things that they can listen to, oh the music that's accurate. It needs to be delivered to them at least a full week. Fuller. Let's just go with a day. <laughs> at least. Let's start with a day. <laughs> At Some least. of y'all can't even get your music a day before. <laughs> let's start there. Okay? I'm sorry. I'm at so least, no, get let's, not, let's not start there. Let's start a week. You uh, know what we do is like sometimes it's out like two months. Yeah, yeah. Okay? At least a week. Two weeks, preferably, because hopefully you're telling people, I want you to know the music. Yes, you show that's rehearsal. exactly what you're telling them. Because if your rehearsal is, yeah. a, is, is a mess, it's because nobody knows what the heck they're supposed to do. That's right. Right? Including you, maybe, as the worship leader. All right, we're getting a little salty <laughs> here for you. Okay, you got to communicate this stuff to people. You have to, yeah. you don't, and you have to communicate the key you're going to play the yeah. song in and not change it on the day yes. of. You have to take 10 minutes yeah. and think through. 
can the person singing this song, whether it's me or somebody else, can they sing this song in the key that I'm telling people to play? It? And is there a recording proving it? <laughs> is there a recording somewhere proving that a girl oh, can man. sing the song or a boy can sing the song? Not only that, but like <laughs> the specific boy or girl that's going yeah, to go, can yeah, they sing it? Yeah, Are they going to yeah. show up to me on the day yeah. of rehearsal and say, can we lower this down two steps because I can't sing yeah. it? Yeah. No, you have to think. You have to communicate with your vocalist. Yes. Okay, so communicate. Well, this is gonna. This is gonna be a good video. I can tell. <laughs> uh, communicate to people when it's gonna end, and end it on time. Yep. Communicate to people. Uh, are we providing childcare? If not, are my kids allowed to come and just mm. go go crazy in the worship <laughs> center? Absolutely. While we're doing, I've been there. Yes. Kids climbing on oh top of gosh. monitors and stuff. Like pouring drinks on the soundboard. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Talk about these things. Let yeah. your people know. Yeah. And uh, a ask them if they have questions and answer yeah. those questions. But you have to communicate yes. and communicate and then over communicate. And set up planning yeah. center to send out reminders automatically. Yeah. Hey, rehearsal's tomorrow, 6.30 at this place. It's going to last till this yes. time. And PCO allows you to set yeah. actually automated yeah. um, re we're gonna reminders. Do, we're yeah. going to play these songs. Yes. You need to have them ready to play. Yeah. Right. Uh, when it comes to communication, let's just get real practical. What we're talking about is email. Okay. Yeah. Forget calling people and texting Call people. And text is, it, yeah. It's it, Email is a great way to do it. If you're using planning, planning center, everything's already set up for you. If not yeah. start a group, but uh, I started coaching soccer a couple years ago. Yeah. And the reason I started coaching soccer is because the team that my kids were on, the communication was terrible. So I thought to myself, <laughs> I'm going to coach, I'm going to coach. <laughs> Because I need to communicate, I need to know when I'm supposed to, I'm busy, right? <laughs> yeah. And all the parents, and here's the funny thing. Our soccer team, the last three seasons, we've gone seven and one, seven and one, and now we're one and oh, okay. right? You know what compliments I get from the parents? <laughs> Thank you for emailing us. Yes. They never talk about, they're never like, oh my gosh, they're having, you know, this soccer, yeah. we're winning all, I've had almost every single parent come and say, Thank you so much for constantly emailing us yeah. when the practices are and when the games are and what field they're at and all that. Listen, people oh, will love you no, yeah. if you just communicate to them. Yeah. They're not used to it, man. The world is a just a messy place, right? Yeah. And so as the worship leader, it's just email your team before, I'd say a day before rehearsal. Guys, here, here's your template. Just copy this word for word. Hey guys, so thankful that you're serving with us this weekend. So excited about this weekend. Just wanted to remind you, here are the four songs we're doing. Here are the keys they're in. Yeah. And I can't wait to see you tomorrow night at rehearsal at 6.30 p.m. in the Worship Center. Let me know if you need anything. See you tomorrow. Your name. That's it. Done. Yeah. That's it. Now, you know, mix it up every week so it doesn't get boring. Yeah. But it also forces you to make sure you've got all the songs ready, okay? Yeah. And all that stuff. But man, if... Oh. And we've mentioned Planning Center several times. It's a service. It's, an, it's a web application you can use yeah. to organize your team, schedule songs, and it has the ability to send out MP3s, mm -hmm. uh, music. We'll link to it below. There's yep. some other options, but Planning Center is what we use, and it's great. Yes. And there, are, there is a free option if your team is like 10 people or less. It's really simple. Where they're supposed to be, what songs and what keys they're doing it in. And what they should bring with them. That's it. Like that, yeah. the, if if people know that stuff, yeah, they're gonna be happy. You've done your job. You've well. done an amazing job. Welcome to the world of of <laughs> middle management. Exactly. <laughs> You're a straight shooter with middle management written all over you. So a third our third tip for having effective rehearsals. Again, you mentioned it earlier. People over product, okay? Mm -hmm. The product is what you're doing, it's right, it's what the music that's coming out, the, the technology, yeah. all that stuff. Don't over spiritualize it, right? What we're doing is a craft. We have rehearsals to get better at music, that's yeah. part of it, but but the most important part is the people. Yeah. And and so, this is a violent, man, if I was, I wish I could be like a police officer that could give worship leaders tickets and fine <laughs> them for every time their rehearsals went later than they were supposed oh, yeah. to. Listen. Do yourself and your whole team a favor and just honor people by simply telling them when you're going to start and when you're going to yeah. stop and doing that. Yeah. It's like rocket science, yeah. apparently, to get musicians. If you say you start at 6.30, start at 6.30, yeah. even if half your team's there. But even more important to that is stopping on time. Listen, they're giving you a night of their week. Yeah. They're very busy. Yeah. Okay, the people are giving you a night of the, the week. Some people are giving you multiple nights a month. Yeah. Like 
if you say rehearsal is done at nine, do not keep them till nine thirty. Yeah. That is disrespectful to them. It's disrespectful to their families. And guess what? They're in their mind. They're thinking, man, this thing is going to go late. And it's mm-hmm. nobody wants to be a part of that. And the reason I say this is because getting the riff to this is amazing grace is not as important as a guy or a, a lady being home when they're supposed to be home. Yeah. You know, it's nighttime. Sometimes it's raining. It's dark. Like you don't need people out driving at 1030 PM because you had to work on the Latin groove. <laughs> you know, it's just yeah. not worth it. Like, and this is why you got to plan your time wisely, yeah. but you do have to prioritize musically. There are some rehearsals we have where we don't even practice a song. Like we'll have four songs and maybe that second song took us like 40 minutes to get right. Mm-hmm. Guess what? If it's nine, we're not even doing the fourth song. Mm-hmm. We'll do that Sunday morning. Most of y'all are only doing it Sunday morning anyways. <laughs> so you're like gaining an extra time. So start and stop when you say you are going to do it. Yeah. Never go late. And yeah. people will love. That's integrity. To mm-hmm. me, that's integrity. Yeah. There's no reason to keep people that late. If you're having to work late, then as a leader, you need to adjust your system. Yeah. Or you're doing things that you don't need to be doing. Communicate to people that they need to be better prepared when they come to rehearsal. That's another thing. And then give them the tools to equip them to do it. Yeah. Keep in mind that a rehearsal is not a practice. Okay? So practice is what we do on our own. Okay? I'm practicing my guitar part. I'm practicing my vocals. You got to create a culture where... Rehearsals and practices are two different things. Yes. We're not practicing. I mean, if you want to get together and practice, that's a four-hour session. Yeah. Let's all get in a room and practice our instruments. Nobody wants to do that. you got to create a culture where the expectation is they've already practiced. Yes. They've already worked out stuff. And one of the reasons they've been able to do that is because you, as the leader, have communicated, communicated with them. Yes. You've given them files. You've given them chord changes. And you don't go, oh, sorry, I thought we were doing this in D. No, we're doing it in C. Guess what? You just wasted 30 minutes of your and rehearsal time. you've looked absolutely <laughs> incompetent. Yes. Not looked. You have been yeah. incompetent. That's good. And yeah. you don't want to be the shoe fits. In- incompetent. Yeah. Like, that's not a word yeah. that I want yeah. used to describe me. Yeah. So I've, don't let it be used to describe you. I've actually bit the bullet on this before. There was one rehearsal we had where um, it was there was a song in D, and I had been thinking about changing it to C like all week. I never got around and to it. You sang it. I sang it in D. I was like, <laughs> "This is gonna hurt, and it's probably yeah. not gonna sound great." But you know what? I'm biting the bullet you on this one. You people. Yes, it product. wasn't worth it, man. Yeah. And we, as musicians, we just gotta realize that the music, honestly, is not that important. It's yeah. a big deal as a craft. But it's not more important than people. Yeah, I would rather have a loose groove yeah. and some wrong chords and have integrity <clears throat> and yeah. have the people have fun and enjoy themselves than have it sound like an album and everybody be like, yeah. I'm not serving on this team again. Yeah. You know? And, and one big thing you can do to value people over product is set aside time. We set aside like 30 minutes mm-hmm. of our rehearsal. Yeah. Right? Every, every weeknight we set aside 30 minutes. We do it in the middle. Which is, it's, it's an interesting thing to do. So what we do is... Let's talk about structure. The Let's way we about, structure yeah. our rehearsal is everyone shows up at 6.30. At 6.30, everyone is on stage. The band. Band and vocals show up at band 6.30. And vocals. Production people are not there yet. Okay, but they do come. They do That's come a later. question we get a lot. Yes. It's like, does your sound person come to rehearsal? Yes. Yes, because your sound, sound guy's there. Got to have sound. He's part of the band. Extremely yeah. important. And if they don't mm-hmm. come into rehearsal, Sunday's going to suffer. Yeah. Okay. So yes, all production comes, but they come a little later. Okay. So our band and vocalists are on the stage. It's not they're walking through the door at 6.30. Yeah. Like, I have my guitar in my hand and all my gear is set and I'm ready to play the first song. That's 6.30. At 6.30. Mm-hmm. So from 6.30 to like, what, 7.30? 7. 7 f- well, so from 6.30 to about 7, band will be separate than vocals. Vocals will okay. be in the back working, band will be... And then at 7, 7.15, 7 we'll come together, we'll run through some songs. At 7.30, you'll have a dead yeah. stop. Right. Dead stop at 7. So we've so already had an hour. So at six, yeah, from so for the first hour, mm-hmm. we spend just working through the songs. Yeah. And it's not, like Fuller said, it's not time to practice no. the songs. It's time for our band to play the Gel songs together. together yeah. And like, oh, it, you know, like there's two guitar players. What are, are you playing? playing? Oh, okay, I'll parts. play the other part. Yeah. yeah. You kind of, you work on arrangement. Yeah. And you to maybe talk through some transitions. Mm-hmm. Or dynamics. Yeah, yeah, and that kind of thing. So you basically we end up playing through the songs once. Mm-hmm. And then at 7.30, we all stop. We go to the green room. The, the production to, crew arrives. Yeah. Lighting. Everybody, everybody, everybody else, is yeah. there. We all get together in one yeah. room. And we spend 30 minutes 
talking about how we can pray for each other, yep. talking about a devotional, sharing things that are going on in our lives. If there's exciting things happening yep. in our lives, we celebrate that. If there's difficulty in our lives, we, we come together and we pray for one another. But it's team time together. It's relationship building time. It has yep. nothing to do with music. Yep. Yep. And that's some of our richest time together. Yeah, and this is thought out. This is not winged. We don't wing this. Uh, somebody is appointed. Yeah. Hey, you're leading Devo. We call yeah. it Devo. You're leading Devo. You're leading Devo. And we just come with a, a little word or a scripture or a thought. And then we kind of see where it goes. And we, but we leave time for people to share. Yeah. And people yeah. Do. And I, Sometimes we've gone 45 minutes in that. Yeah. And if you're in a larger church, like there are people I wouldn't. I would not. All I would know about them is their name. Yeah. If we didn't have this time, I literally have been in those devos where I'm looking at someone going, I have no idea who that is. Yeah. Well, and then through that, the I find out. And then you build you relationships will, and, and you stuff. You will hear, I mean, God will reveal to you amazing things through yeah. this. Yeah. So then after the devotional time, usually right around eight, so now we got an hour to run like 30 minutes of music. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, take a water break, whatever. And then we simulate the service. We turn a countdown full on, run through full run through call. everything. Countdown hits zero and we just run it like it's the service. You know, if there's a massive breakdown, we'll stop and restart. Mm -hmm. But we'll do it. We'll do the whole thing as if people were in the room. And by the time we're Done. It's like 8 30, 8 30, 8 40, and we're like either send everyone home or maybe there's one thing we need to work on. Yeah. Or maybe it's hey, you know what, band, you're released, vocalists, come here and let's just tweak this one course. Yeah. I try not to waste people's time, which is why production crew doesn't show up till 7 30. Why should they sit through an hour of watching the band work on songs? You mm -hmm. know, it's like that's that's a waste of their hour, right? Yeah. Um, that could be an hour they're, you know, reading or spending with their family or, or whatever, or not yeah. going 100 miles an hour trying to get there yeah. from work. So um, don't waste people's time. Um, that one of my huge pet peeves is like when the vocals stop and they spend like 30 minutes on stage and the whole band sitting there going like this. <laughs> like that's just a waste yeah. of everyone's time. You got to be smarter than that. It's cool to stop and work on something real quick and yeah. but but like if it's going to take more than like 3 minutes. Yeah. Offline that, do it at a separate time or, or yeah. whatnot. So you got to be smart. Again, it all comes down to not the music, but valuing people. Yeah. And that whole full run through thing is really important. If you're not doing that, uh, we would really encourage you to do it. Yeah. And there's nothing that lets you know how great or how terrible like a transition between songs it is going to be until you actually do it. Do it. And you don't want that to happen for the first time during a worship service. That's right. Right? And so we actually do a full run through at rehearsal. The last half of our rehearsal is a full run through. And we do it again on Sunday morning. Yeah, Sunday morning is just like a, a dress before, rehearsal. Before yeah. service. Yep. So like our first, we have two services yeah. at our main campus. Our first before our first service, we have fully run through that service front to back, and maybe hit a couple uh, parts twice, yes, executing yeah. every single element as though we were in an alive with pastors, service. with yeah. yeah, twice, yeah, right, and so like as, you, you never wonder. There's you know, no question. You know how it's going to get to do. Yeah, here, <laughs> right, yeah. right. You never yeah. you you know, and <laughs> it removes excuses. Like if if I play something in the wrong key, is like well. You've That's done it my four fault. times. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Down below in the description of this video is a place that you can get a just a, a standard template for a starter, a starting point for you, how you can run your rehearsal with timestamps. Yeah. And the typical time, 6.30 to 9, pretty standard across yeah. America. That's what we do. Yeah, that's what we do. What you, do. you tweak it, take it, yeah. you know, maybe you do an hour rehearsal. Who knows? Um, but, but just keep in mind that it's always about people. Yeah. And anytime that you can create something in your ministry to value people and to give them something, add value to their lives. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, through rehearsing, you will add value to their lives, especially if you focus on this community piece. And then also they're just going to become better musicians. Yeah. I mean, if you play 100 times this year or 200, which one do you think is mm -hmm. going to make you a better musician? So it's that's really what it's about. Mm -hmm. Community, excellence, all those things honor God yeah. and uh, honors the people that serve on your team. So we hope that this, this has been very helpful. Love to hear your comments in the sections below.